It is 4 4 p.m. on Monday, May 20th. The Board of Commissioners of Fire Electric Department is meeting. All commissioners are present, as is Ken Nolan and Scott Johnston. Is it Scott? Is it Johnstone or Johnston? The former, John Stone. <clears throat> Sorry about the mispronunciation. No worries. Okay. Are there any modifications to the agenda? Session to the customer. Yeah, we need actually, um, I think, three executive sessions because I think we have to have separate motions for each of them. Well, I make a motion every executive session to discuss uh, customer matters. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we need a motion. I think we can just add it. Um, and we need. Um, I'd like to add to the open meeting the discussion of Nicholas Pond. Right? Nicholas Pond? Yeah. Uh, where would you like to put it, brother? Any. I'm, I'm in. Okay. Hopefully, we can come up with it. Um, how long would we put it after the financial report? And. And I think we um, need a, a, there's one executive session there, but we need another executive session to discuss an employee matter. Is that the same one that Mark referred to? Or is that, is that the same one no. that you know? No, no, no. We've got, we've got, we need three executive sessions. Yeah. And there'll be two on employee matters. Okay. Okay. And actually, we've got a, an update on the, um, well, we can have part of the update in, in, uh, in public session, you know, that's, that's one of the important matters. Okay. Uh, anything else on the agenda? Clearing nothing, the next item is the minutes. Uh, is there a motion to approve? I move to approve the minutes. Second. Well, is there any discussion? All in favor of the minutes? Aye. Uh, there's actually two minutes. What? There's two sets of minutes. Okay. Uh, this was just on the 15th. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, 415. And then the, and then from 5 6, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes. 5 and 6. Any discussion? Is there a second? Sorry. Second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. The minutes are approved. Um, we don't have any public here, so no public comment today. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the Union Bank line of credit. And we have The line of credit that is being proposed, I can see it, by the way, this title in it, it says receive almost one knee after the R. Um, so I don't think that that's fatal. So this is a $200,000 line of credit with an interest rate of 5.82%. For a year, we would only pay interest on the amount that we borrow. It's not revolving, so once we borrow it, it's gone. Is there any discussion? Um, I think in the discussion, just want to confirm with Beth that this is this line of credit is not intended based on the funds we already have and the projections we have as a business. So we don't have a plan to draw on it. It's, Correct. We're, we're creating it such that if we get into a jam, we need it to draw it to pay the side of interest rate. But it's not a plan to draw it. Right. Nice. Great. On that basis. Yeah, this is just, just in case. Um, yeah. 
a bunch of representations in here. Has, has anybody read the amount on all of the reps? Well, it's a lot. What? There's a lot. I, yeah, I've only read you know, scanned it. The one, two, three. Yeah. Um, you so, we have read the, I mean, I think everybody should read the representations because that's something that we're saying in our true. Okay, well, let's do it. So let's just run through it. So that we're doing the note simultaneously with the certificate that the officers of the issuer have legal responsibility um, for issuing the note, that it's made for certain current expenses, that the amount borrowed doesn't exceed um, what we have available to repay. Uh, that it's not being issued to refund an obligation, that um, we're not going to sell anything during the life of the note um, in terms of any personal real property that is being acquired. So, I mean, to me, that's, that's a bizarre thing because we, we sell things and dispose of things all the time. Finance. We're not financing. I mean, money's fungible, so I suppose we're fun. anything that we do will be financing through repay funds, not for so particularly not for yeah. Um I mean, for governmental purposes that we are creating or establishing any debt service fund pledge to the payment of the note. We're doing this from right there revenue, um, that our expectations are reasonable, um, that we don't have any tax certificates from IRS, no proceeds are being used for a variety of things, for bond arbitrage, um, for other than municipal entity, that we're not loaning the money to anybody, that um, it's not being used for a, a contract that's more than a year old. We're not using it to finance construction uh, of, of any equipment other than for public use or invested in a matter of um, or for a period or a yield that results in a rebate of interest earnings to the United States, which I don't think I've heard of anything. Um, that will comply with law, that um, proceeds won't be expended for the purposes of paying the costs associated with the issuance of the note. Um, there's some reference to sections of the Internal Revenue Code that are not being violated, um, that we're not going to take the proceeds and invest it. Uh, more on, on, on arbitrage, um, yeah, um, I mean, can, people can read 17, can <laughs> read it out loud, um, that the, and this is the municipality reasonably expects, so I, so we're not, I think that's for the municipality, but the aggregate amount we should, uh, is it more than five million? Um, and then there's a ten million threshold of other debt of any sort. Um, so I think I think we're okay with that. Do you know Roger has the town and just come up with the? Um, Not while I was there. I, would, I didn't sit through the entire meeting. Um, but it's set up to be to be a part of their next meeting. Okay. So, which will be before the seven. I think so. Which takes us to the resolutions. Do we have specific activities that this on credit is protecting us in the event that it unfolds? Or I understand it's insurance, not planning to spend it, but with, with all the things that we just said, we understood it's not going to be used for. It. It's basically just cash. It's, it's like just in cash. Cash. It's just cash flow. Yeah. It's yeah. So if you yeah, if you don't 
collect, you know, the expenses are up or the disbursements, you know, use, use it up or revenues are down. Cash in and out doesn't go the way we expect or not like to. Okay. Um... And then there are resolutions. There's also a security agreement. Um, it's pretty plain that all security agreements. Did the, Eli have looked at this? Kind of thing? Yeah, so Eli has, has Eli Emerson is our um, regulatory lawyer. Mm -hmm. Eli Emerson is our regulatory lawyer. And okay. So he's reviewed the security okay. agreement. He's he was the head of it. Yeah. These have been reviewed some time ago. We were, we were going to enter into these just before, well, just after Mike resigned, and we didn't have an authorized signatory other than Mike mm -hmm. at the time. And so that was, so I think we're okay on that. Um, so I think what we have to do is we have to approve the resolutions that are on pages 20 and 21 and pages 20 and 21 of the um, packet. And since the packet is a document rather than reading these into the record the way we did last time, <laughs> um, I would like to move that we adopt the resolutions entitled Town of Hartwood Life Department Resolution Current Expense Borrowing on pages 20 and 21 of the packet for this week's, the board for this week's agenda. Uh, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. So, did it? That we can Everyone has to sign these. There's three different documents that everyone has to sign, so I'll do it after the policy meeting. That's great. Thank you. Super. Nobody's allowed to leave. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I will help you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So the next item on the agenda is an update on the status of Volkett. I don't know if we we're going to do that or if Dave is going to join us. Uh, Dave had an early morning, so I, I did talk to him. I have a rundown on where things are. Kind of a, a mixed bag at this point. Um, things were going quite well until the end of that last week. So I'll give you a kind of where it all is. Um, the, the building obviously is all cleaned out. The mezzanine, so the second level, is all installed. That's done and finished. Uh, the station service panel's been completed. Uh, the high pressure unit is three quarters done. It's on schedule where it's supposed to be. They made no place progress payment. I'm expecting that to be shipped next week. Uh, that's all going forward as planned, but we're starting to see some issues um, on the turbine itself. That's essentially complete. They were ready to ship it yesterday, but this last week, and they ran into two issues. Uh, when they pressurized it, they had an oil leak, so they had to re rework the piping. That, that's been fixed. Um, and also, when they looked at the um, spacing between the turbines and the base, they found that being so old, they eroded. So you were getting a lot of slippage going through the, the turbine itself. So they built those edges back up to resolve the slippage. But like balancing your tire, now they've got to balance the turbine so it doesn't shake. And they're struggling to get that balanced. So we've, we've been delayed about a week so far on that. Um, Dave's got some program as hard as he feels like he can. So we're, we're hopeful to work build from tomorrow to take it back on track. But it's really, it's going to, you know, these type of things you can't really tell how long it's going to take. And this is in Maine? Uh, it's in Ontario. In Ontario, okay. 
So even once that's done, it's going to take some period of time to get it. Take a couple of days to ship it. To ship it. Okay. They've got everything lined up. It's just a matter of getting the term ready to go off. The biggest thing is we have a crane on our end. We need to have there when it arrives. They've canceled the crane three times already. Mm -hmm. So now they're in kind of a holding pattern trying to figure out what's going on. So what's the expected in-service state now for Wolfen? Do you know? Maybe or roughly? I think they were planning on August time frame, and that still seems to be viable, depending on how long this, there's two main issues now. The turbine, uh, we're expecting is it's delayed, but it's not a huge issue. They're on our final step. The bigger concern that came up yesterday and today um, is on the generator. When that was shipped off, the expectation was that the generator would be um, sent to the contractor to be steam cleaned and baked. So basically it's flooded, got all kinds of sand and debris. The concept was to remove it, send it away, they'd steam clean it to get all the debris out and all the contaminants out, and then you bake it to get all of the water. So that it actually can run again. They sent um, the end of last week. That contractor sent a revised proposal saying that after going through that process, they don't feel the generator water is not passing tested. They feel it needs to be rewound. That was not in their quote. So what they originally quoted was about a $10,000 expense to ship it and do the cleaning. The latest estimate they sent is about $107,000. So Dave's right now going through that and trying to understand what they're proposing is in there, what really needs to be done. There may have to be a little bit of a negotiation that happens there before that can proceed. So that really becoming more of the critical path issue. I do remember that from when Mike was describing the project that it was that it was a we hope we can do it and avoid the rewind. It wasn't a you know, guarantee. It was no guarantee. Yeah. 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 But when we went through the paperwork, it literally you know only included the cleaning and then explicitly said it doesn't include anything beyond that. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, that's that's the bigger issue at this point. So uh, is that is that a timing issue as well as a dollar issue? Could be both. Yeah. Yeah. And we can the, the turbine can be installed separately. That's the first part that needs to go in. But obviously the generator <laughs> is <laughs> 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 right. So it doesn't stop anything. From proceeding on other parts of the project, but that's that's a key item. Um, the other two things that are still up in the air: um, the switch gear. We're getting a quote to rebuild the switch gear. Uh, originally, I think the concept was to buy new. What we're finding is the timing on the new switch gear is about a year delivered. Yeah. Um, the contract has looked at the existing. This is. It really is in, it's old, but it's in workable shape. It can be rebuilt and will work just fine. Um, so we're trying to get a quote for that and get that side moving and rather than waiting in the year for, for it to come in. Um, and the feeder line from the generator to the switch yard, the small stretch of, of conductor that needs to be put out. Uh, we got a quote for that for 21000 Dave was going to reach out to Jim and Brian. He, he believes that's something that the Harvard crew couldn't do. Um, so if there's time and availability, prefer to do it in-house than have a contractor do it. Um, that's the overall situation. Uh, I know Dave's talked about a little bit. In the project, it was a proposal to put a steel door on the front and a concrete in part of the windows. We're holding off on that right now. Dave's experience tells me probably don't want to do that to the hydro plant. 
Why? 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it, something I probably need to have him come and talk to you about. Um, it's not, it's kind of the last thing you would do once the plant's back together. So it's not yeah. really limiting it up. His concern is the building's about 100 years old. And if you reinforce the windows and the doors so it doesn't have water through, you may actually cause the whole building to have foundation. <laughs> So looking at it, his gut reaction was not really confident he wanted to do that and we'll solve the problems he think it was. So that almost sounds like we should get someone, an architect or a structural engineer in before you to, to, to look at that before we make any kind of a decision about it. Yeah, so about seventy thousand dollars between the two projects. Probably be worth having somebody to work at. Yeah, we would need, I mean, if we don't do that, we need to replace the windows. And the door. Yeah. Uh, need to be some repair work, definitely. Uh, the other thing they've raised, and I don't know if this got looked into by Mike or not, a lot of these hydro buildings are on the State Historical Preservation Registry. <laughs> if it is, then that raises some other issues you have to deal with before. I, I, I don't recall ever hearing any. I, uh, I asked them about it explicitly in the meeting. Did you? It was fresh off, but I don't. Okay. Yeah. So that, that might be a good one to ask for. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this in public. I know I don't think they're all they want to drag me down with me, but <laughs> give, I would, yeah, that might be one where you ask for forgiveness. If, if, if you truly believe it's vital to protect the plan. But we'll get shame on us if we rebuild a planet and a year later we have another. Food. Yeah, well, first we have to find out about the structure of the building. Yeah, that's. I mean, that that seems to me to be essential. Yeah. Um, so we can we can get someone in the big one. That would be that would I I think that we, would be. We did a big industrial building in the existing building, and I have all these vents in the whole space. The big of a couple hundred feet square feet turned out with the floor, and because of the river overflowed, yeah. they didn't want to just bounce against the foundation, so they had to have to work it through. And when Sandy hit. Just that one is right through the bottom of the building. And it worked. And it worked. Yeah. So we're going to get a special to look at that. Maybe slow construction. So thanks. But it's an interesting point. Hey, was there a line item in the budget for the new switch here? The line item was there, yes. For new. But the delay is will keep us off the line. So right. so if we go to rebuild is less than the same source. Yeah. It well, is. we believe so. We're we'll waiting for the quote right now. It okay. should be. Yes. And there looks a little bit about the right. Yeah. Do you um I don't know when it seems to me that this project, if it, something goes up, goes down, changes, as long as the project team isn't unilaterally deciding, oh, let's let's spend money and change the scope if they're just getting it done, that we don't need to make, we don't have to approve additional funds. Because I hate to think of us delaying, being indecisive and delaying. I, what I don't but I want to make sure. Is, we, yeah, well, I take your point. I don't remember if the, you know, we had 100,000 for, for rewinding the generator in there or not. I don't think we did. But we can approve that as a as a you yeah. know conditional thing right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. I um, then let's do it. So what we have is hundred and seven thousand dollars. We should just only negotiate a little bit so we can down there. We can we can say good uh, roughly. Um so um and if there are any other things like that. So on the on the question on was were you going at that there might be some savings from rebuilding? Yeah, yeah that's that's which is would be great um, and could be applied, but um, in terms of where the money comes from. But I think just so that there's no question, somebody want to make a motion? Yeah, I, I move to um, prove extra spending on the project as required to complete the rewind um, and to continue the, the, the project. I'm not giving a specific number. Yeah, I'm I'm just not just oh, and spending on construct uh, structural engineer regarding the closing off of windows and doors. I, I, 
Can I have a motion before the floor? Go for it. Well, I'm not just restricting it to the windows and the doors, but, but evaluating the structure of the building, including the windows, obviously. And other things that may be necessary. Is there a second? Sure. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. So, we can't thank you enough for what can I thank you enough for two words for. Um, you know, and if there is something else that's big, and because I think Roger's point that we don't want to get in the way of something that's critical path, if we need to, we can have an emergency meeting. Um, if there's, if there's, you know, I, I'm not, I don't think any of us are worried. Relatively small. Amounts, but if we're getting into six figure amounts, I think yeah. we should be. It's definitely informing, is really, but having you here informing us of the uncertainty now, the completion date and the dollars is really good. We don't want to be surprised by that. Nobody, when you do a project, wants a surprise. <laughs> so, like I said, I got filled in on Thursday, and I think this is in our call. Everything's going great. Yeah. Friday, Friday, yeah, Friday, 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 Okay, um, <clears throat> sorry, I can't drink water. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is uh, hiring, <clears throat> hiring discussion and management planning. Um, we have um, two, three issues. One related to hiring linemen, uh, which is why I was hoping that Brian was going to be here. Um, uh, one related to um, hiring an interim general manager, and Scott uh, is here uh, with us. And the other related to hiring a general manager, getting that process going. Um, taking me First one, in terms of hiring linemen, at this point, Beth, there are two, we've received two resumes, to qualify. Um, and I guess the question is, is how we best go about evaluating them. Um, I would think that whoever is coming in as general manager, but in addition, I would think we know that you could have some very helpful input into that's it's it's something that you know a lot about, <laughs> and and um, and I certainly think that we should have Brian's input because the, you know yeah. person's going to decide. It seems to me that that's the that's group great. of people who should be looking at the resumes and making a decision. Yep. Um, unless somebody has a different thought on the matter. I think it's kind of. Do you want one commissioner to just listen to me? Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's so. I read some of long ago. Um, but I read that it's uh, quite impressive. Uh, I had one question. There's one of them there. I'll give me either the new location for someone. It's very well, I'm a suspect. I call that. Yeah, that's yeah. a good interview. Yeah, no, that's, that's the question. And, and, and one of the persons seemed, to be honest, Way overqualified. Yes. Um, and I, I don't know if this is really what they're looking well, for. That's again but, something we but can we're find quite, But we're happy to find someone who's overqualified because it then creates for Brian on some schedule the option. So our, the overqualification, somebody walking in, proving themselves, there are going to be. Higher positions to come. 
Yeah. Right. That's what that's and what I'm saying. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, first things first. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm not saying we should reject anybody. And no, no, that was just an observation on, on so, um, so yeah. That same resume with um many positions in quick succession was they are their headline was that they're they're finally close to home. That was the second one. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. not the overqualified. Yep. So, and, and, but that but but that and you, you I emailed that. him. Okay. Emailed him and just wanted clarification on that. Yep. And he said, uh, "Yes, definitely." To, okay. One ready and going to be. Okay. Are we going to have a relocation fund? Or we have some, well, you know, one of the questions that I have not um, had, I did not ask Scott Kemp, a labor lawyer, because I had looked at the union contract and I didn't see anything that talked about relocation money one way or another. So I don't know if it's permitted. In other words, if the absence of well, something that's... permits it or prohibits it. If Dutch were done, I would ask for a contract of time span that would yeah. be committed yeah. or refunded. You gotta refund it if you leave within yeah. a year. That's normal in business work. Yeah. yeah, but that but the but the issue is even whether we can do that because of the mm -hmm. contract. That was what I wanted to ask. Yeah. Now, something with that. I, I don't know. Scott, can you hear us? I can. Have you had that situation with, with relocation? Yep, Dan? I have. I, I don't think you have a problem. It, you know, if it was prohibited in the contract, you'd have a problem. The fact that the contract is silent, typically anything silent in a union contract is a management right. Um, and so, you know, you, when you do it, you may find out the next round of negotiations that the union asked for it to be included. Um, but I, I think if, if you had an opportunity to bring someone in and it required a, a, a relocation stipend to seal the deal. If, so long as it's not prohibited in your contract, I think you're on safe ground. My understanding, Scott, um, a union contract is a minimum, not a maximum. Correct. You know, it just occurs to me, Scott, that we didn't we even introduce any of ourselves. You know, you're on the screen with your name there. Um, so after we finish this discussion, we'll, we'll do that. And I apologize. Oh, no uh, um, okay, so is there anything else that we need to do? I, I would say that we need to get that process going as soon as possible. I agree, yeah. So, so will that be in a position to ben, communicate and schedule? <laughs> That's great. Just in the direction. Well, I think, you know, it's, it's a question, it'll be a question of finding out when, yeah, when the people are, you know, available. You know, and Brian. And, and likely our interim general manager as well. And so I think that. No. If Scott is going to become an intern, should he also be present? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I just said. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> I'll speak louder. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. We are on the same page. And is this going to go, as far as alignment is concerned, go forward like immediately? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It is an immediate need. And, and, and we know, have two open positions. So I mean, and these yeah. people, in fact, are people that we've want we don't want them taking other positions so the sooner we move the better um yeah you should be aware that i think every utility along route 15 currently um has openings for linemen and is desperate to find them so um so you should definitely not let any grass grow under your feet yeah yeah, yeah. okay so that's uh one. Um, so now we turn to interim general manager, and I guess this is a good time for people to introduce themselves. Um, I'm willing. So I'm the easy one. Well, no, Beth is here too, so we don't have a name tag. So uh, I'm Lindy Dank, and we've spoken on the phone, Scott. So it's it's very nice to 
get a base for the boys. Um, and uh, I've been on the commission for, I think about 10 years, something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, and I, I will, people can. I Scott, Miles Cameron Show was the newest member of the commission until so. <laughs> nice to meet you. And Scott, I'm Roger Prevo, uh, Hardwick resident, and been on the board for several years, not as long as Lynn, but, but several years. Uh, Michael Ambrosino, also from Hardwick. It is nice to meet you. Good to meet you. And I'm Reno Murns, and I'm a retired lineman from Hardwick Electric, and the finishing uh, past commissioner's term, don't know where to go from there. <laughs> what year did you retire? Um, last, well, not this past April, but a, a year ago, 2022. Okay. So Hardwick is like most of the munis. When, when people retire, they never really go away. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if I circulated um, to all the commissioners, the email that you sent, Scott, um, I think I would like to really defer the discussion of that to an executive session with you because I think it, it's some of the matters may be confidential and we don't want to. Um, but I don't know if you have any questions for us that you would like to raise at this point or or not, or or the commissioners have any. I think it's just a moment to, to deal with it in an executive session. In executive session. So, and then when we come out, we can take action. <laughs> before we move on, if I may. I'm sorry. Before you, if yeah. I may, before you move on, uh, I did think the commission should know. I got a call at two o'clock today from a, a Paul Hano, who is a former manager in Hano, Massachusetts. <laughs> He apparently has a relative who's involved in the Morrisville um, Board of Trustees, all retired in 2020, I believe it was. He's been on a few years. Um, but he wanted, he was calling me to ask about the Hardwick interim position and express interest in that if it's something you were willing to entertain. So I don't, no information other than you have one message. I believe it's H E A N U E. Correct. And the town was also Hano? Hano, Massachusetts. Oh, Hano. Hano, Massachusetts. I don't know. Sorry, voices. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a big room. Okay, so. Um, so as I say, I have no information from him other than he left me a voicemail about two o'clock today. And hey, where did did you get a sense from the voicemail? Does he live up here or live down in here? He lives in Massachusetts. It would be he's got relatives in Morrisville, so I'm not sure what he's thinking there. But his his relative is the chair of the board of trustees um, at Morrisville Water and Light, <clears throat> so he has a place to stay. <laughs> This is Vermont. It's, it's like it's like six degrees of separation. That's Still exactly nice. right. <laughs> I did, and I do. You started the conversation. Yeah. So I thought you should be aware of that yeah. entry up there. So his, his interest is only interim, not permanent. Correct. 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 And I do think it's worth you at least checking that out. Obviously, you no, know, I'd be splitting time and and. Uh, doing everything I can for you um, to help out as a neighbor. Um, if you've got an opportunity to get somebody with the right experience who can really just be dedicated, um, that could be really great for you. It's no lack of interest on my part. Just, you know, I think I said when I talked to you, Lynn, on the, on the phone, I said the same thing. If, if a person appeared with the right qualifications and could give you, you know, more dedicated time and effort, it, it would seem to me it is likely best for you. So, um, you know, my interest is purely to be a good neighbor and to try to help you through a tough time. So I, I think we could still talk about it. And maybe if, if you're interested in talking to him, maybe even figure me out as like a backup if things fall through with him. 
know, I'll, I'll be as interested at the end of this week as I am now in helping the neighbor. So, um, you know, we do that with as you may. If you just want to proceed with us, that's fine with me. Um, but I want to make sure you know, making sure you guys get coverage is all that really matters from my perspective. I'm not trying to build a resume. Let me let me put it that way. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I guess what I'm saying, Kevin, is is did he send you a resume or anything, or could he or could he say? Or, I'm sure he can send it directly to me, or he can send it to you, and you can send it to me. But yeah, well, this indicates depth of experience. Well, if he was if he was GM at Hingham, which yep. is uh, a wee bit larger than this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> What's the nature? It's a municipal. It's yeah. Yeah, it's a municipal. It's a municipal. Yeah. Boston, basically. Yeah. It's 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 Massachusetts, and their system is different. Their state regulation is different. Yeah. Because munis are really independent in Massachusetts, which, much, which they are not in Vermont. And he would be much more used to making decisions himself with his board rather than having state regulation and all of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And an interim basis might be okay. Uh, I worked with Paul uh, three years on the Northeast Public Power Association Committee. He's the chair of the committee on, and all from there. It's, Good guy, seems to be straightforward, fairly aggressive in how he handles things. But, uh, yeah, we do. <laughs> but I probably, if you're interested, I would do the same thing I do with Scott. I'd give him your uh, phone number and ask him to just. Till direct, there's no reason to have me in the middle of this conversation. The, the, other, the other way to possibly consider this is that Scott's being you know generous, signing himself up for um, a pretty big personal burden, keeping track of two organizations. Um, and Scott doesn't know how it's going to feel after a month and another month and another month based on how it's going. So, so another way to possibly look at it is let's get up and running with Scott if we decide that's what we want to do and then have some conversation with Paul and see if he's um, potentially an alternative if it's too much. Which which is a different order of yeah, operation, yeah, it's a yeah. different sequence. I think that's something and because Scott's knowledge of everything that Harvard Collective yeah. needs is so perfectly matched. The only problem for Scott is it's a double duty. <laughs> you know, right? So it seems to me that that's the best thing right out of the box. Yeah. Scott's a known quantity, he knows what he what needs to be done. That's the best place, that's the best place to start. Yeah. And then if it's too much, then you're more interested. But that, that would be my instinct, rather than holding off and pretending like you're yeah. playing yeah. one versus the other, because almost without knowing anything about the other person, there's nothing he could say that would tell me that he's a guy of choice. The, 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 only, the, the only thing is having somebody full time. Bingo. That's the that's the that's the only thing that would argue, and I like I, personally I like your suggestion of having the discussion, having that potential as a backup. Because yeah, Scott, you may find that it 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 just doesn't work. You mean that they say no in about fifteen minutes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fifteen but, days. But I think I think. Vermont is is it's not unique because I think there's one other state that, that does it at least similarly. But apart from that, it, it it's it is very different from um, the the environment that munis operate in, and um, and having a neighbor who knows our system, who knows FEPSA, who knows a huge amount. Um, we can we, we can discuss this further in, in the executive session, but I, I but I'd say still yes, we would like to be in touch. Yeah.
Okay. Which takes us then to the discussion of the general manager job description that Miles circulated on Friday. And I don't know. I read this online. <laughs> I had a couple of minor comments. Like oh, under, okay. under experience, it starts with a bachelor's degree, which you can put in there. I, I just look, I'm pretty in the middle instead of the beginning. Mm -hmm. So no choice of real immediately. You have seven years experience, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Bachelor's degree would be nice. Do we have to say people need a driver's license? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um in work conditions. And they need a CDL. That's GM. I don't know what GM means. No. Yeah. And just um, yeah. just mm -hmm. asking. It was go ahead, Mikey. And, and the work conditions, you know, the stuff about how to operate, you know, outages, frequent interruptible. Do we have to ask if he knows how to use a telephone? It's kind of yeah. I don't think I, I agree. I mean. This yes, you know, the cell phone system that we have. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> I've had some discussions about our telephone system. Uh, it's not the people using it, it's it's the system. Yeah, I, I wondered whether we needed something about generally functions in a typical office environment. Yeah, the subject to the temperature and noise. Two of the four, those two bullet points. Yeah, we need to be. This, yeah, we we got a lot more than the last one. I'm sure <laughs> we might encounter paper and pencils. And yeah, <laughs> yep. breathable air. Yeah, <laughs> the other um, stuff is good. Uh, is there is there interesting trap? I suppose maybe sure. in Hampshire. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I don't think it's a requirement. I don't think it's. it's fine. Fine. I, I think the shorter this is and the work, the better. Yeah. That's my personal view. Yeah, that's quite a So, I mean, I think the thing about being, you know, being involved in times and outages is important. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure what increased workload during the period periods means. I'm going to put those 20 hours instead of eight. Yeah, but what are the periods? Yep. No, I think that was covered in the first blow. I think that was a little different. Um, <laughs> really, frequent interruptions to assist staff respond to right payers and regulatory concerns. That's been part of the job. Yep. I, 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 I think. I think rather than having the outages stuff, I don't even know if it needs to be in there or Maybe it's part of the essential job yeah. functions. I like that. It's performing a leadership role in restorative service. Mm -hmm. And we can get rid of the whole work conditions. Perfect. Done. I thought on competencies, I'm not sure what the difference between well, there needs to be something about working with the public, and not just public presentations in different formats, but something about... The first essential job function is representing HD in public maintaining and improving relations with the department's customers and teachers. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 we, but we don't have a competency related to that. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I'm not sure how you frame that, and I just wondered in the general description. That's where I that, that we that need was my that we need something. Of, yep. So maybe we just insert in there. So I mean, the, the, you know, the <laughs> communications and customer service yes. and effective problems. Yeah. Communicating. So. You know, working in collab, that's a nice term. Collaborative, collaborative. that's great. Mm -hmm. Collaborative yeah. and never combative. <laughs> the other was where it's establishing and maintaining a positive working relationship with the board of commissioners. Mm -hmm. I would also say, and with the town manager. Mm -hmm. Board commissioners, town staff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the town 
Yeah, yeah but I think we should single out the town, uh, the great town manager and select Herbert. Anybody have anything else? That's great. Miles, good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then what's what are people's thoughts on the next step on this? The the, the search uh, opportunity, the opportunity to engage, I can't remember the acronym, but the search assistance seemed I had in the last meeting said, well, let's be careful of getting a fancy headhunter. I, I had but enough. then this yeah. one, this particular one that you surfaced seemed what what about my service? I'll find it. <laughs> yeah. Um it's the NRECA, the National Rural Nature Property Association. Yeah. Their properties in their name, but they work with municipals as well and they're nationwide. And I worked at utility that used them to help them find the general manager. Um, so is there someone at in 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 RCCA? Yeah, yeah, that we should be. Yeah, that's that's the best. There was that person. Give us that person. He was in that message, but I can resend it. Yeah. But my my suggestion to answer your yeah. question is that we go ahead and advance that discussion. She didn't say what it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. I have so, contacts. Yeah, so I think what we should do is let her make her pitch. You know, to us, so then we can decide. Is that yeah. That's, that's that's what would she do and how much but are we are we gonna wait on putting this risk? No, out? I get this thing. Okay, so then the question is where are we putting it out? Are we putting it out on NEPA, presumably? Could you do it everywhere we're doing the line? We could if we use it if we use uh, any agency to help us, they would probably have recommendations mm -hmm. where I can put it. They need but, but we're talking about calling we're, ahead. We're talking about not waiting and sort of yeah. decided who we who to use because we can always pull yeah. the ads or whatever. If, the, if we could do the same places I do now, I've got one in D, which actually in D is pretty pricey, um, like five to six hundred dollars a week. Um, <laughs> Thought we, should, we could actually pull that down now, have, but we've got one of the resumes we got, we got two and D. Well, no, we got three D. Um, NEPA, uh, APPDA, American Public Park right. Association, NRCA, um, seven days in Vermont, it's still there. Um, there right. so, and does the does the Epson Institute or anything have is there any equivalent that where they have anything or that's that's going to be the big I am use anyway. So it would be a net APPA would be the equivalent. Yeah. Um, so is that a reasonable proposal to make? Then, Ellie, why not go with the same? The same, the same, the same, the same, same group. Um, and I guess the question is about it, indeed. Um, but it's just as important. And, and the, the risk is that we get an avalanche overload. And we can always we can always pull the plug on it. You know, yeah. it's a week to, it's week by week. It's week by week. And um we can also change the budget. And we might want to reduce the budget on the linemen right now. I haven't got much in there. Um I'll see there's I pretty much got it at the very bottom. Oh, you can reduce it down as low. You can reduce it, but the bottom is five dollars a week, I think. For indeed, for indeed, they didn't offer me that option. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe oh, because it's a different job. But whatever the bottom, we can talk about it. Okay. We can talk about it. Okay. Um, but it, again, if we if we were hiring a headhunter, headhunters usually charge what is like 30 percent. I would say thirty percent. So you know, we'd be, we'd be looking at way into five figures um, on either position, whether it was for lineman or for um, for general manager. So um, if we're talking about commercial managers, I don't know what the CA charges. I don't know what their space. Yeah. And, so, and VLCT was dead in? It was not. They gave, they, the woman that I spoke with said that there were two people and neither of them were available and she's been checked with another one and they weren't available. And she gave me the name of a of a you know a link for a website and I got on the website and it looked like it 
Uh, can and Scott, are we overlooking searching? I mean, the only, if you're talking headhunter, the only other firm that I'm aware of focuses is the Mycroft, Mycroft, Fry, and Prouse. They work with the hometown connection with a lot of Midwestern utilities. They don't do so much on the East Coast. And our ECAs, I mean, they're going to give you a VMC type service yeah. where they'll gather the things that we do and give you some response. So. What, I, what I did get from VLCT is some information on, um, I think I sent it to everybody, yeah. um, on structuring the evaluation an interview and the evaluation process that is appropriate for our public entity. Yeah. But we need some resumes. Yep, yep. <laughs> we have some time to, 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 to do that. Um, and uh, the list that gave you a place to advertise this is the same. I asked Scott and that's the same places. Right. <laughs> Let's post them. Okay. And um, with respect to the compensation, um, as you've got it drafted, I don't think I have something in there. Yeah. Um, we should, we should, one, well, one this of, is a job description. This isn't the job ad. I think, okay, so, but the job description would go to any. The job ad would have to include or link to the job description. Right, right. link to is on great. So it's sort of like you so, put the general description in the ad and then you link to. The whole thing, right? But we well, the general okay, the head is going to need to say something about compensation. And which, you know, I would, would say, be, I would say, you know, compensation, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars per year, and or commensurate with, uh, you know, with experience. And so what we'll do is we'll screen out all the people who are looking for two hundred thousand dollars a year. We might show a little bit of openness if they, like, if they need to get paid 140 because they've got a perfect background. Yeah. That would be because well, once think, you put a number out there, you're never going below. I don't think we should put a number out there. I think we have some secret about, about the number. Um, because I think that 120. I, I don't want to have that discussion now in the session because I think it prejudices the issues of the, the interests of the electric department. Okay. Um, I don't think we should discuss that. And, and you know, so we are better informed because I think there's some issues which I would like to raise. Right. Um, so, um, but I think job description. Not the job description, the job ad um, needs to be written up. Is there somebody volunteering to do that? Can we not just take the relevant? I mean, could Beth just take the relevant points? Well, but we need to put in something about compensation. We would discuss that. I think we need to put in something about compensation. Let's come up in this executive session that we, that's well, just a short short sentence. Well, it's also, there's other stuff that needs to go in about the equal opportunity employer and the, you know, you don't discriminate and, you know, that good stuff. Can you put the compensation out of the number just by thing? Just some new description where a compensation could be in terms of dollars. There's also the benefits that probably should be in Okay, so the next item on the does anybody have anything else on hiring management planning right now? Then moving on to uh, an update on the union contract. I'm sending everybody uh, the email that I got from Jeff and Lynette. Okay, I was saying, <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so that, um, their proposal is uh, to start negotiations in June, and I would like to uh, table the discussion of substantive matters related to that. Um, so as not to prejudice the interest of the electric department to the executive session. Um, and the next item on the agenda is the which is parallel to what the government said. Does anybody have any questions? Any comments about that? I mean, right now, we're, we're ahead of the game. Yeah, it looks like it's over. So that's that's a good thing. Any anything? Any questions for Ken? Okay, well, which takes us to the next item on the agenda, which is the financial statements. Any questions or comments on that? I would like to give y'all an update. Um, this is regarding the hydro and the claim with VLCT. Uh, the claim with VLCT that they allow uh, $690,000, and if uh, Mike, Mike had mentioned it, y'all remember that, VLCT had a pool of money that they said that's the max they will allow, and it has to be distributed amongst everyone. Uh, HED's portion is $414,000. And we got the check today. Oh, oh wow. Well. Thank you for handling that. That's great. That's yeah. great. Thanks. So our cash position is a little bit right now. Um, as of today, one point nine. Oh, and I had that some other information here. Um, and as far as hydro costs that we already paid yeah. out the door, right at three hundred eighteen thousand, uh, the estimate of what we had contracted to pay, and that does not include the rewinding that you just talked about. Uh, we still got about four hundred thirty thousand. And those are estimates or actual numbers? So the actual pay is three hundred eighteen four hundred thousand. Okay. That's still the pay estimate four thirty four. So, so the actual pay is how much? 318,400. And that's just the hydro components that then they play the distribution. And, you know, it, it's still, by anybody's measure, a, a good investment based on the value of the power we generate. But it's not, it, it's not, um, that's not infinite so there is a cost at which you say we shouldn't repair it my my i don't know what the threshold would be but it's um you know it depends how you do your math and what your you know what your cost of capital is you'd be better at that thing but <laughs> we've got um we've got leeway but not infinitely mm -hmm. so right now when we were thinking we were going to spend eight hundred thousand to get it back online, and I think its annual value to us is something like two hundred thousand. Um, that was flush in my head. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know why. Would two hundred sound right? Well, yeah, I think it's about right. So one hundred fifty k that would be one hundred fifty two hundred. Okay, so say two hundred thousand. That's that's a pretty good payback. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's four years. Well, especially for an asset that could last another fifty years. Right. So yeah. you definitely want to build it so it lasts, and then we can flood it out again. Because <laughs> we won't, you know, we won't be whole. We want to pay back the cash for. You know, for several years. Yeah. No, it's not a one year thing. Yeah. It's under the building for one year. It's a big question mark, but it needs to be looking at. It's not a dollar in sense. But your point is it? It's a liability. It's a long yeah. 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 I mean, we're, we're going to. So we get might have to spend more money on the dealers and the and the tax, whatever it is. Good point. 
Yeah, we don't we don't know. So if they came back and said no, you can't plug those spaces, wouldn't be the end of the story. We'd say, okay, so how else could you run the rules? Okay. What did we do to protect this? Gotcha. That's a good point. Well, there may be things independent of the windows and yeah. the door that relate to the structure of the building, given that it's 100 years old mm -hmm. and has just been flooded. Yep. Um, but, and, and, and may have had other force of water set over the years before this. So it's, it's, um, it bears looking at. It. So who, how do we decide who will hire it and when do we hire it? Well, I think once we can. I think Anna's going to relay that back to our project. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Approve. You approve the hiring, so I'll go get hit of the device. Do you have names and lists? No. Uh, uh, I'll leave it. Great. We've got a number of firms to do that type of hydro work. Reach out. Great. 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 Any other questions about the. Uh, One just comment for um, for Beth is that you know I think you're putting these funds as they come in these sort of special purpose funds you're putting them in separate accounts right mm -hmm. uh, so you've got them commingled okay now so, on, the, on the books we've got them separate but as far as physically yeah so my worry would be. Um, don't I think we should keep a compartmented view of these funds and that they are for the projects and they're not for uh, covering operating. No, that's yeah. fair enough because then if, it's, if we think of it as on the bottom line, yeah, what about setting up separate camps? Or um, some way to. Although I shudder, I shudder at the thought of another round of bank resolutions. Don't do that. No, I don't think you need some. I don't. You, I think that, that's well within what Beth can do for us. Yeah. When what we really need to run our budget against the cash flow that we budgeted and planned for, and we can't take any comfort for. We can't take the approach of things are okay because we're not running out of cash. Right. Right. right? Because now we have this incredible amount of cash, it could make us, you know. No, you're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Which, which is why I put the numbers together say, okay, we spent this much, how much yes. do we still have to pay yeah. on what we budgeted yeah. so far? Yeah. Um, yeah. So you think about how to do that. I think that if everybody agreed, but, what we're asking you to do is to keep it compartmented somehow mm -hmm. and to not tap into it without, it's a big deal. We need to talk about how are we doing on cash flow or living within our means and not tapping into this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's all. Yeah. People don't want to put one bulk thing and they start spending yeah. at the end. Of the I can't pay them. I'm spending. Mm -hmm. It, it, it really, yeah, it doesn't mean we can do all, like, it doesn't mean we can call the roof contract the grant, the other one, you know, right. you know, just spend it all, do all the capital in the project. Yeah, yeah right, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, it's, it's earmarked. Anything else on the financial report? Okay. It then takes us through, and I'm going to apologize because I uh, there was one other other business which I would like to do before we get into executive sessions, which is just an update on on transmission um, situation. situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. which we can do it after at this time or before the most. Aren't you yeah. before? So so um. Scott informed me that um, Marcel is willing to talk to us about transmission. Sure. Um, hello, Scott. Hello. Um, and I guess probably the next step would be to have a proposal from Marcel on, on how um, they would like to do this. Um, 
Yeah, I've been working on that and we'll definitely get a proposal together. Um, it's mostly mapped out uh, when we, when we, when we uh, became co had Johnson become a co-owner at the co-owner at their request, I think in 2013, um, you all were part of that conversation at the time, but didn't um, come in for whatever reasons. Um, the the agreement uh, that went to the PUC and with with Johnson pretty clearly specifies exactly how it has to go. And actually, which I'm not quite sure why people agreed to it, but it, it the the agreement even says that Morrisville can't give any other utility a different deal. So it basically I can lay out for you. Um, the way that the deal with with Johnson worked, and and how what what's allowed and what's not allowed in that, and and uh, lay all that out for you, so you can take a look at it and start that consideration. That would be great. That would, that would be okay. Which takes us to Nichols Pond. Roger, you want that? Sure, I'll do this. <laughs> so. Um... I think why don't we do a little background for stuff? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is complicated here to stick with it uh, because it goes back to very ancient history where um, Nichols Pond, which is in the town of Woodbury, not Harvard, um, was important to the future planning for hydro. In fact, it did power a small hydro unit at the bottom as it flows all the way down into Hardwick. And then that hydro unit was deactivated well, 100 years ago, I don't know. Long, long. Yeah, long, long, long ago. <laughs> and, but Hardwick Electric continues to have a dam and continues to have property, which is at some level of dispute now, separate issue um, up there. So we've got, you know, we've got our dam and we are responsible for maintaining it. So we have an access road to it. And we are intertwined with another property owner group overlapping where we do that together. And we've done a nice job with that other, other uh, entity making it available to the public until um, bad actors started coming in and using it as a place to party, do drugs, stay. The, the access was always daylight hours. And those bad actors like to be in their nighttime hours. And last year, uh, a bad actor with a van basically camped out there for an extended period. And that made the, the, the daytime users, the lawful users of it, very uncomfortable as a safety issue. And um, so we decided to put a chain across the access road to block vehicles. Not because we wanted to block, you know, the daytime users, but to prevent the nighttime. Um, that was interpreted by local people as blocking access. You know, that somehow no longer could you use. It's the only way to get on the Nichols Pond for the gentleman. We control our access road in the only way, and people would drive in and just have to walk, you know, 100 feet with their kayak or canoe to go into the water and join the lake. And we made it so that they'd have to walk down the road. And I think some people may have perceived it as it's no longer open because it's a chain of cross. That wasn't our intent, my level. We never intended we can't use it. We just said we can't take a vehicle down to the dam. So um, on, I think it was picked up on the front porch forum. Yes. Yeah. There was a post out there. And um, what I'd offer up for the commissioners to consider is that we get out in the front porch forum and we tell the Gazette as well that we just want to reconfirm at a minimum Nichols Pond access via the dam for daylight use is open to the public as it has been. The chain is to prevent the issue we had last year with nighttime illegal use. And that's that to me um, is a good first step. And the, there may be members of the public who say it's just I'm physically unable to bring my, my yeah. watercraft, whatever it is, that distance. And at that point, we could try to come up with another solution. But, but it won't be right at our fingertips. Right now, I think all we have to do is tell them that it is a bit open, but you have to walk. 
And by being silent, it's really bad practice. Yeah. Right there. Mm -hmm. that, but when they had that group came to us that one night, you know, and they left, I thought the idea that they were going to come back to us with some idea. Yeah, we were, we were yeah they were monstrously complicated because Hardwick, the Hardwick Police Department can't really go in and enforce it for Hardwick Electric because it's not in Hardwick, it's in Woodbury, and Woodbury doesn't have the policing capability. So, you know, we don't have a real a way to police it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with that so long as whatever we put in makes it clear that people are using it at their own risk. Well, that's the other thing. Um, yeah. And I mean, because I, that's, this is the, I appreciate the PR problem, um, but I am worried if there is an accident at the dam that we're going to have liability. Did we put a fence up last year at the dam as well? There was a fence when the work was, I think, when the work was being done. Yeah. But I don't think there's a fence now. And the piece in, in front of which form, because I haven't gone over it, didn't say anything. Of, it's just said a chain. Yeah, they're, they're talking about the road access. Um, we don't want people on the dam. I think there was a fence at the spillway. Yeah. yeah. Just so that somebody doesn't go over the backside of the spillway. Yeah. 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 So, my so any thoughts? I mean, because really, I think I'd fine. nominate Michael. If you agree, I'd nominate yeah, Michael. Michael. So I'll do a reply on that. Well, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> just incorporating the, you know, that you're at risk and we're not endorsing using it. Yeah. Um, the, the, we may hear from the property owners who are going to. Be annoyed about people fighting. That was the problem. Yeah, yeah. That's the other issue there too. Yeah, because if they can't, that's the. I mean, that was part of the issue. Well, if they, they can't, if they can't park in what had been the parking area. Well, I'm I'm so pro access that I'd be willing, as one commissioner, to say, take the chain down and let's see if we have the same problem. But we may have the same problem. And then, I went, then my next step would be I'd ask Opie, since he's working with the, the, the police department and he's, he has an open line to the Woodbury town manager to, to evaluate other solutions for the property owners. I don't think we're all that well suited to be in the middle of Leasing options. Yeah, we're not. So we're not. It's just not our thing. We're not. I. I'm not. I'm not. I don't object to taking down and seeing what happens. The um, growing up here, a little bit of punishment has been since I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and our PD all the popped into. Oh, they did. They they got got all about this. They wrote. Oh, we should tell Opie that. <laughs> well, that. Uh, um, it's just a yeah, but they yeah. have no authority. Yeah. It's, it's outside. It's not fair. It's well, that's not always fair. Please, yeah. I'm not a Vermont lawyer, but it's outside the jurisdiction. The fact that it's owned by the an entity that, that is owned by the town of Hardwick doesn't make it part of the town of Hardwick. I'm not saying that they didn't. That so you're predicting what you're saying is don't be shocked and you're moving that gate up and there's going to be a problem there. For yeah. that part, yeah. for and the crowd during the day is okay with it. Yeah, yeah. Are you well, talking about people do build units that are respectfully and, and swim and enjoy? Yeah, we're talking yeah. about during, during the day is fine. What we're talking about is there were issues at night. There were noise issues, there were drug issues. Yes, and there will be. If we take the chain down. Yep. All right, I think there will be regardless. So just be that. That's fine. Yeah. I think it's a lot less when you don't have the vehicles. Yeah. Okay. But no, you're probably right. People will, if even if they have to walk in, they'll go down. Yeah. Part of that psychology is people aren't keen on leaving their vehicle up mm -hmm. back on the road at night. On the road, it will be people's property. Like if you need a truck up top, I have to go to some of the backyards. If you need to know who owns the vehicle up north before the fence, you're going to be on other people's property or you're going to be on the 
you can be in that road right away, but still there are properties down below that gateway that people are going to have to get through. So yes, you're going to be on private properties uh, and there are really no place to pull off. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's not a... Have, have you ever visited? Yeah. Yeah. Today? yeah. Um, basically, you might be able to pull on to the power line there. Um, and that's about it. I don't think there's much... But they're living with it now. Because it's been changed for a year. Yeah. No, it's been right changed right. and nobody's been coming in. Yeah. Right. I so like the idea of opening it up and bringing the town in as a thought partner. And how can we maximize our access and minimize the pressure of the minimums? So, the, the, so now what we're entertaining is the one thing is just to say there's a chain to prevent vehicles Foot, foot traffic, access one foot mm -hmm. is allowed in the daylight hours and the daylight hours two moments. That's the plan. Yep. Yeah. Should we go to plan B or not? Or should we wait for somebody to come back and say, please, please, please take down the chain? Well, we know people want the chain now. Because we know, because the piece that was in front of Coach 4, who the person was saying, you know, it's not convenient for getting my kayak and, and, and paddleboard down there. Mm -hmm. So we know people want to change. Yeah, I know they're eating like shit. We want to, you know, shit mm -hmm. part time get around. So yeah, yeah. So if we if, if we're gonna go with Plan B route, which is taking the chain down, I would rather just take it down. Say nothing. And not say anything. I know there's value in in, in positive publicity, but with rather than drawing attention to it. And and making sure that we have a sign up there that says that you're using this at your own risk and this is daylight. Okay. This is you know, no no parking. parking. And nobody's allowed on the And no one's allowed on the And do we want to preemptively involve over here the town? And yeah, I think we need to preemptively, if we're going to plan B, we need to tell him to do it. Because he's the first one who's gonna get phone calls. He's gonna, he's gonna get it's not gonna be us. Yeah. You know? Do we know if it's a private road completely or is it that? We went through this <laughs> yeah. a year ago and the road is not private, as I recall. But it's not maintained by the town of Woodbury. I think I, that's my recollection, but I wouldn't swear that I'm correct. I'm not very Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. probably knows. So I don't recall. But what I what I do recall is that people are parking on people's property and yeah. people are upset about that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you want to uh, I make uh, I'll I'll why don't you make the motion and I'll second take the change. Make the revenge. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't want to steal your idea. <laughs> hey, <Mom. laughs> I move we remove the chain at Nichols and Access Road. We put up a sign enumerating the use, and we bring the town in to let them know what we're doing and make sure that. We have their buy-in. The only the only streamlining suggestion I have is we there is a sign down up there now. Mm -hmm. We just review the sign to, to yeah. confirm that it's at. I don't know if the town's buying things. Well, do we want to make sure we're not overlooking anything and have a conversation with them before we follow through with this? That's a question. That's for discussion on the motion. Okay. There's signs of the motion. Okay. I, I, I don't I don't think it's a question of the town. The town has the town's not doing anything with this. You know, if, if the town wants to, you know, I know we're part of the town. Okay, we're a department of the town. The town's not sending the town's police department there at this point. I mean, this is what we were told last year, mm -hmm. that the police department was not. Um, and only was involved in those discussions, as I recall. Mm -hmm. uh, was not going to patrol there or monitor the situation. So apart from that, I don't see 
I think you, they come back with something that we make, you know, and, and they say, you know, you're being idiots about this. You should do X, Y, or Z. We'll, we'll then discuss it and we'll figure out a way forward. But I don't know what, we're not looking for them to have a buy-in in a resolution of the select board or something. I, I think, um, we just want to let them know. Okay, so I would concur. So we'll notify them. So, yeah, well, that's so I'm, I'm making an amendment to the motion to delete buy in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like that. And, uh, and, yeah. and, 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 and insert notify. Great. The town manager. Yeah, I'll talk to them. Is there a second? I second. Okay, so first, is there any discussion on the amendment? Hearing none. All in favor of the amendment? Aye. So the amendment passes. Any discussion on uh, further discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Howdy. Howdy. How Sorry, are you? Sorry, not with the 30. That's okay. We're glad to see you. Um We've been through most of the, well, all of the agenda until we get to some um, executive sessions. So I think there's some things that you would like to share with us. Sure. Nichols Pond doesn't have, a, doesn't have a fence by the dam. That's all right. But the gate is right. Yeah. You got to park in somebody else's property to get down there. So I'm sure the property owners are on and would be pleased. Um, just to let you know, it's uh, we have hired Asplin to do trimming. Um, they started leaving door knockers today, just to let people know that we're doing the trimming. And um, I sent an email to NEK this today. Thought we were going to start trimming this week, but but probably be next week by the time we actually start trimming. Uh, but I hope we're going to get three groups. So that'd be nice. Um, the yellow barn, we're going to uh, install that transformer Wednesday and hopefully hopefully get it energized. But uh, if not, it'll be the first part of next week when we get the transform the meter energized. I'm not sure they've got an energizing permit yet. Uh, so to do that, but that's the plan now. Try to do that on Wednesday. Um, uh, uh, working on a, the Grassbury Fire District has a pump, uh, has a, they're putting in a pump out behind Sterling College. And um, the original was going to be three phase for a seven horsepower pump, but they're going to now add a at a phase and just going to be single phase. However, there's issues with the water line and electric. And so the boys and gang is doing this stuff. Brian and I went up there today and I just I just sent him a thing that said we need to kind of um, we need to meet on site and see if we can make it work because they they were a year and a half just getting the easements down there is federally funded. There's a whole bunch of issues going on there, and it is like a ten foot road, and you got to get water and sewer, water and electric down that ten foot road. So therein lies the issue. And but just so you get a heads up in case you hear from Craftberry. Um, What's the spacing minimum requirement? What's the requirement on spacing the distance between? I'm sorry, so the requirement on spacing between the water and the oh, ten feet, mm -hmm. ten feet. So, <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's so I, they got to go down either side, but it's it's just a pro it's problematic the way it is. But we're gonna try to do something to uh, we're gonna try to work with them. To be able to make this happen, and that's yes. why we're doing it. Meeting on site with the boys and can. That's great. I think that'll happen, and we'll see what we can do. Um, so, when is when is that meeting happening? Pardon me. 
When 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 is the site? Uh, they're trying to get that in this year by August or September. Okay. So it's not like next week. No. Jimmy, you said it was a fire pump? No, it's a water pump. Just yeah. Water. yeah. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say that. It might be a fire pump. I don't know. It's 2,000 feet away. So. Wow. 2,000 yeah. feet. A line of power. So that's we, gotta, we need an easement also. So I'm not sure these guys have an easement through Solomon Sterling College's property. And these guys haven't got an easement for the water. We're trying to figure out how wide that is. We'll take it from there. But I think what we do need to do is try to work with them to make this happen if we can. Absolutely. It's been it's been a long term project. I'll call it seem to be longer. What? What? So is this is this to have a, a hydrant? No, it's a they got a, they they've driven a well down there and they're going to use it to pump water maybe for hydrant. I'm not sure what they what they're using it for, but they're going to they got a three inch water line coming out from there. So that would that would not that would handle a hydrant. You've got to have like six inch or Whatever prior. Anything else? Um, I sent you an email right probably around the five o'clock. I had a call from a gentleman who's interested in the GM position. Wow. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, does he look qualified? Is it reasonable? Nice I asked him if he was silver tongued, and that's he said he was. So that, that's a big one right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, he works. He worked for Danvers Electric. He's the NEPA director of safety and training right now. He worked for Danvers Electric for twenty five years, and he's like he was a lineman. He's a master electrician. He's had a bunch of jobs in Harvard. I mean, in uh, at Danvers Electric. So I don't know. I didn't get in straight with him. Uh, he was me, Jack and Crap, this one told him about the job. They told him it wasn't posted yet. I didn't know if that's true or not, but that is true. I did not post it yet. <laughs> well, I said he'd be first in line, so he <laughs> um, I'm just trying to, for the rest of this, I'm just trying to, I'm going to give you some recommendations that I would make in the line extension area. Um, I'm going to give you some recommendations on your rate structure, which I know I'm not, that's not my bag, but I've been in it for a while. I know what's going on with other places. And I'm going to give you the state statutes that apply to electric utilities only for your knowledge of how whether we get a right away in the town, what we can cut, what we can't cut, yep. how they move all the poles, just so that it, you are aware that of what and what we cannot do. And no line is, if we have a, had a line there for 50 years, we didn't, there's no, that does not even So I'll put all that together, get it to you. Super. Um, is that's all I got? Let's see if you have any questions. Looks like we have any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kara. Thank you. Can you send your wife some flowers? Yeah. <laughs> I know she did your mail on all of it. <laughs> so I do plan on working to the end of the week, if that's all right with you guys. That is yeah. perfect. So that fine. I that's can get great. some things cleared up. Whatever. That's, that would be great. That would be great. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so now, um, and I think it would make sense to do the executive session related to an interim general manager first, because that would affect in fact, who's in the further executive sessions? Great. 
Um, so, um, I'm just thinking about who should be in this, in that meeting. And we, Scott, we would like you to be in that meeting. Um, Certainly. <clears throat> so I would like to move that we go into executive session uh, to discuss uh, a potential employee. Um, confidential discussion of potential employee. Um, is there second? Second. So it is 539. Thank you. 539. And do we have a portal? I'm mixing it. Is that it? Yep. It is 546, and we are out of executive session. No action was taken. Is there a motion? Well, we make motion. <laughs> Way less fun. <laughs> I, I move that we enter into an arrangement with Marshall Water and Light for Scott Johnstone to be our part time interim manager for a period of three months. Um, and, and that we will compensate. Marisol Water and Light at Scott's salary and benefits plus 20% at half of Scott's salary and benefits plus 20% to reflect the fact that Scott will be working more time in total as he splits his time between Marisville and Hartford Electric Department. And, and, and that the board authorizes the chair to sign an agreement with Marksville Water and Light, giving effect to that arrangement. And that Scott would be starting the week of Memorial Day. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes unanimous. Oh, Scott. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I look forward to working with you all. And uh, you know, I, I do think this is a workable thing. I've actually had to do this one. I'm look, looking forward to it. And, and uh, we'll, we'll find our way through. And you know, it, it, I also think it's a really great building block uh, for our utilities to come closer together. and and reestablish some really good relations. And so I'm looking forward to that. Great. Thank you. We are as well. We're very grateful. Perfect. OK, so the next um, item. Oh, take your session to discuss the customer matter. To discuss the confidential customer matter. I presume I should leave at this point? No, I think we should be here since this is okay. Dealing with <laughs> perfect. <laughs> um, you have company. <laughs> yes, I do. Looks <laughs> like a company has a toy. <laughs> Golden Retriever. Um, I'm sorry, would you restate your motion? Uh, I mean, the motion we take a session to discuss a customer matter. Customer matter. Okay, all in favor? Okay. It is 5 me and we are in executive session. It is 6.41 and we are out of executive session. No action was taken. Okay. Um, I would like to move that we go into executive session to discuss 
uh, a confidential employee matter. Second. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We are going into executive session. It is 622. Sorry. Uh, no. I'm yeah. going to use that's what we use the correct time. It is 645 and we are out of executive session. No action was taken. Is there any other business that we need to discuss? So Scott, you know, just shoot me whatever Marsville wants to do yep. on, on an agreement and Welcome and thank you. <laughs> this will be fun. We'll, we'll get a lot done. We'll, we'll fix some things and hopefully clear your deck so you can get your new manager in and, and get everything stable. Great. Thank look you. Look forward Scott. to it. Thank you so much. Yep. And Most welcome. Look forward to meeting you in person. Sounds and good. All right. Is there a motion? Motion again. Thank you. Any objection? Here I am, then we need to adjourn at 646. Bye-bye, right. y'all.